What's your name? Thank you. My name is Chandra. Chandra? Yeah. Okay. Um, what was your I question? I have a question. I want to know how do y'all know that it's each one? Good. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14. Bring it out. Great question. Great question. The sister asked, how do we know that Jesus Christ is a black man? Bring it out. Now, the, the more astounding thing that we should ask is, how do you know that Jesus Christ is a white man? Because that's what they've been teaching for years, and we have never questioned that. Right on, but now man. we're going to answer your question according to the Bible, unlike the Christian church with their white men. You understand that? Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Start of verse 1, so she know what we read. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. Uh -huh. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So this is speaking about Jesus Christ. I want to make sure you know. The revelation, the word revelation, the root word of a revelation is the revealing of Jesus Christ. Now we're going to jump back down. We're going to show you what did they reveal about Jesus Christ. Verse 14. Uh -huh. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So when they revealed the image of Jesus Christ, he had white woolly hair. That's you know what right. Read. As white as snow, uh -huh. and his eyes were as a flame of fire, Three. and his feet like unto fine brass. And he had feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Brown. Brass is brown. But listen, we're going to go into more detail. Read. As if they burn in a furnace. As if what? They burn in a furnace. Now, if I burn something, what color is it going to be? Huh? It's going to be black. So what color is Jesus Christ? He's a black man. Look at this image right here. You see that? That's the scripture right there in front of it. So we can give you a visual depiction of what Jesus Christ looks like. You see that? Now look at this image. Does he fit the description of Jesus Christ? Absolutely not. So the question we should be asking is, what has this white man been teaching us for over 400 years? You understand that, sis? Now, if he lied to you about the color of Jesus Christ, what else did he lie to you about? That's what you need to ask yourself. Right. You call yourself a Christian? Okay. How do you love God, sister? Okay, that's good. But how do you love him? What does he call love? Do you know? Right. Okay, good. All praise, sis. You got a humble spirit. Because that is how we must move forward. We got to acknowledge that, guess what? We do not know how to love God. Because guess what? Everything that we've been taught came out of the mouth of our oppressor. He has not taught us anything that is possible unto us. So now we got to re-examine and re everything that we've been taught and filter it through the scripture. Give me that. Love of God. First John chapter 5 verse 3. This is how you love God. For this is the love of God. For what? For this is the love of God of God Three. that we keep his commandments that what we keep his commandments so the way you love God is, is by keeping his commandments you ever been told that yes. okay so now let's get into it yes man the lady said in the show y'all would have said y'all thing but y'all talking about how y'all been seeing over there she said we can come on that side too yeah y'all come on that side to change things okay all right i'll pray all right so what are some commandments that we must keep Correct. What else? Okay, good. What else? Okay. All right, all praises. So what you are quoting are commandments, correct? Now, you got those right. Now let me ask you this. What day are we to keep the uh, holy? Huh? What day are we to keep holy according to God? Huh? Sunday? That's what you've been taught? Okay. So look. I'm going to read it, and then we're going to break it down. Exodus 28. Bring it out. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day. So the Bible says, remember the Sabbath day. Do you know what day the Sabbath is? Saturday. According to the Bible. Huh? It's Saturday. But what day does mainstream Christianity go to church on? Sunday. Sunday. Mmm. Jesus was white, go to church on Sunday. Do we find those in the Bible? No. Now the question that you gotta keep thinking about this, what were they teaching me? How much more of what they taught me was lies? Read that again. Exodus chapter 20 verse eight. 
Remember the seventh day uh -huh. to keep it holy. So now we know what day to eat, which is what? Saturday. Now how do we keep it holy? Do you know? That's fine. All praise. That's why we are here. We are here to teach you God's laws and ultimately receive salvation. Right. So now we're going to go into how to keep the Sabbath day holy. Can you cook on the Sabbath day? Yes? Okay, let's get that. Exodus 35 and 2. And that, because the way they keep Sunday, right? Do you do anything different on Sunday besides any other day besides go to church? Is there any other stipulations? No, I got news for you. They aren't. They are not keeping that day holy according to the Bible. Right. But we're going to show you how God ordained us to keep the Sabbath day holy. Read. The book of Exodus, chapter 35, verse 3. Uh -huh. Ye shall kindle no fire uh -huh. throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. So, the Bible says that you are not supposed to kindle any fire upon the Sabbath day. Now, during this time period, you, will use, you have to use fire to do what? There wasn't any ovens or microwaves, right? So when he said don't kindle the fire, he's making mention of cooking. That's what he's talking about. You understand that? But why not? Why do we not have to cook on the Sabbath day? Give me what he gave us two portions. I think it's 20, yep, 22. Now, I'm going to give you some history. You read the Bible before? Okay. When the children of Israel came out of Egypt, right? They were in the wilderness for 40 years. During that time period, we had to keep the Sabbath day, right? And God said on the sixth day, which will be Friday, Thursday night to Friday night, I'm going to give you two portions of food. So that way you won't have to do what on the Sabbath day? You won't have to work on the Sabbath day, right? I'm going to read it. The book of Exodus, chapter 16, verse 22. Uh -huh. And it came to pass that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread. You see that? On the sixth day you gathered twice as much bread. Read Two omers for one man. Uh -huh. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord hath said. Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today. And see that which ye will see. And that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. So he said, I'm going to give you two portions of food. And you, whatever you have extra, you eat that tomorrow so you have to cook. You understand that? So, for example, we know it's, it's Friday. All right, I need to buy two subs instead of one. But tomorrow I can't cook and I can't go to the store to buy a sub. Make sense? So that's one way you keep the Sabbath day holy. By not cooking, all right, you understand that? The second way is by not buying or selling on the Sabbath day. Because, like I said, the Sabbath day is an ordained day. You want to keep it separate from every other day. So there's certain stipulations that you don't break. You understand that? Now, I'm going to give you another commandment, sis. I'm going to give you one that you can change quickly. Give me Deuteronomy 22 and 5. I'm going I'm to test your spirit, because you've been, you've been good so far. But now I want to see if you're really serious about this thing or not. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So the Bible says that the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Read. Neither uh -huh. shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So now the question is, what is a man for? Huh? Okay, good. What is a woman's garment? Woman's clothing, right? Underclothes? Yes. Uh-huh. What else? Huh? Bro? Okay. What else? Okay. If I had on a dress right now, how would you feel about that? Yes, I think you Huh? How would the majority of our people feel about being a dress? They wouldn't like it, why? Because a woman is traditionally what? A woman is born. That's what it is. Read that again. The woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man. No. What pertains to a man is pants. You understand that? That's what God's telling you. A woman cannot wear that which pertains unto a man. He's making reference to pants. 
beast be, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. That's talking about what? Dress. There you go. There you go. Read. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So God says everybody that does this is an abomination unto him. So, what's another commandment that you got to keep according to the dress code? It's what? Huh? We just read it. The woman shouldn't wear what? There you go. And so let's get more specific. Because some people might say, I don't know what man's clothes are. What she? There you go. A woman can't wear pants and men can't wear dresses and skirts. Do you agree with that? You agree with that? All praises, sis. All praises, sis. That's how you receive the kingdom of heaven. Christ is down with that too. Give me Matthew 5 and 17. I'm going to show you that Jesus Christ supports that statement 1,000%. And I'm glad that you do too. So if you were a wise woman, what would you do today when you got home and you got home and you went into your closet? What would you do? There you go. Throw away all your, all your pants, all your shorts, and throw them away. And put on a dress on a skirt. You understand that? That's righteousness according to God. That's right. Read that. Matthew chapter 5 verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. So God says, Jesus Christ says, don't think that he came to destroy God's law. Read. Or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. God says that he did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Read. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So Jesus Christ said, everything that's written in the commandments, they are going to stay until everything is fulfilled. Now, has everything in this Bible been fulfilled yet? Has Jesus Christ returned on the earth and he rained down judgment on all the nations? He hasn't. He hasn't. Has he delivered the children of Israel throughout the four corners of the earth? He hasn't. So, do God's law still stand? Absolutely. Absolutely, sis. All praise to the most high. So now we're gonna get to the good part. You wanna hear the good part? The good part is that Jesus Christ died for your sins. He's gonna give you an opportunity to repent of your sins. But we're no short. But spoken, whatever it is that we do in the world, Jesus said you can be forgiven. But now you gotta walk in righteousness. Right. You understand that? Acts 13 and 38. Bring it out. The book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 38. Acts 13, 38. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Through Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, is preached the forgiveness of sins. Read. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things. You see that? All that believe. Now this is the difference in Christianity and the truth. All that believe are justified of their sins. Now we've been going to church for hundreds of years and we've been doing the same thing over and over again. I'm going to show you what does it mean to believe according to the Bible. Give me that. You got it? The book of Acts chapter 21 verse 20. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe. Which what? Which believe. And they are all zealous of the law. And they are all zealous of the law. That means they are excited about keeping God's laws. You understand that? So when you truly believe, that means you are keeping God's commandments. That don't mean you foaming at the mouth. That don't mean you're giving thousands of dollars. That means you are keeping God's commandments. Right. And when you keep God's commandments, he offers you a chance at repentance. Because according to the Bible, guess what? You being the children of Israel, you are going to rule this earth one day. You understand that? No longer will we be at the bottom of society. God has called us to rule this earth with a rod of iron. Give me Revelation 2 and 26. The real good news. Listen good. The book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 26. And he that overcometh. And he that overcometh. Overcometh what? His sin. He that overcometh his sin. Read. 
and keepeth my words, and keepeth his words, which is what? God's law, statutes, and commandments. Read. Until the end, uh -huh. to him will I give power over the nation. To that man and that woman will he give power over the nation. Guess what? 144,000 men are being formed right now. And guess what's going to happen? We're going to have a righteous woman by our side. You understand that? That's what's waiting for you to keep God's law and judges and commandments. Keep reading. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And you shall what? And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And God says he shall rule them with a rod of iron. You understand that, sis? Let's go back to Acts 13. I want to make sure you heard that real quick. But we're going to get back into the repentance. Because that's the most important part. Got it? The book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 38. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. So, understand, through Jesus Christ we are justified of things that before we could not be justified of. If you're a homosexual before, you will be put to death. And many other things. But now, through Jesus Christ, we have the opportunity to repent of our sins. Right. You understand that? This is good. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold, ye despisers and wonder and per So, Acts 3 and 19. All right, so now we must repent. What is one thing I told you you have to do? You got to take off the shorts and put on a dress, a skirt, right? Another thing that you have to do is congregate. Give me that. Act, uh, I mean, not Acts. Acts first. Keep the Sabbath day. So, on the Sabbath day, we went over. So now you need to join a body of believers. Because you got to be taught what to do and what not to do. How old are you, sis? 28, right? So in your 28 years of life, understand you have never been taught God's laws, thus saith the Lord. So now in the Bible, or well in Christianity, what they say always? When you come into, when you get saved, what they say? You got to be what? Born what? Huh? You got to be born again. But what do they do? They dip you in water and then what? Nothing. They just let you sit down and you don't never grow. Now I'm going to show you how God calls you to be born again. That means a change must take place. You got to acknowledge that everything that I've learned up until this day was wrong. Right. It was wrong. And now we got to figure out, okay, I can't do this, I can't do that. Can't do this, can't do that, can't do this, can't do that. So on and so forth. You got to be taught just like a child. You understand that? Let's go to Matthew 18. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 3. And he said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted. Except what? Ye be converted. So God says, except you be converted. What does it mean to be converted? If you convert something, what did it do? If I got four quarters and you hand me a dollar, what did I do with those four quarters? I what? Changed it. There you go. Except you be what? Except ye be converted. Uh -huh. And become as little children. Become as what? Little children. Me? Ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So except you be changed and become as little children, you will not enter into the kingdom of God. You understand that? Now, you, you got any children? Okay. So children, what do they do a lot of? Them? They make a lot of what? A lot of, they make a mess. Yep, that's true. And they make a lot of mistakes. Correct? And they take a lot of what? Chastising, right? You got to hit them on the hand a lot. You got to beat them on their butt a lot. So understand, coming into this, this truth, if God says you're going to become as a child, what does that mean going to happen to you personally? You're going to receive a lot of correction. You understand that? But that's the difference between the Israelites and the true Jesus Christ and Christianity. Because in the Christian church, I have never heard or seen of anybody being told what they were doing wrong. Have you ever seen that before? I have never seen it. So what, what we must understand is that they cannot be doing what's written in the Bible. Because the Bible is full of correct. Matter of fact, give me that verse 23 and 16. What the Bible is for. I'm going to show you what the Bible is made for. Got it? 
2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. No. Paul said all scripture is given by inspiration of God. But for what? And it's profitable for doctrine. For doctrine? For reproof. For reproof? For correction. You see that? For correction. But why is it in the Christian church that all they worry about is how many times they pass the plate? All they worry about is what's, what's going to be the uh, third after the third. So on and so forth. They never worry about correction. Because I'm pretty sure today I told you you can't do more things than you ever heard of in the Christian church, right? They never told you that. Because guess what? They don't truly love you according to the Bible. Or they have never been taught the Bible correctly. What you doing? The book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. You see that? For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. That means correct. If we love you, we are going to correct you. You see these sisters right here? Those sisters are in the body with us. They used to dress and do the same thing as everybody else in the world. But what happened? They came into the Bible. They said, you know what? I can't do this. I can't do that. Let me change what I'm doing. You see that? So don't think you can't do it, sis. Read. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, uh -huh. and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. And he scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Meaning everybody that comes into this Bible in sincerity and truth, you have to go through correction. You got to go through change. Give me that in Sirach 2 and 1. Let's start there. Sirach chapter 2 verse 1. Uh -huh. My son, Read. if thou come to serve the Lord. So God says this. If you want to come to serve the Lord, read, prepare thy soul for temptation. God says prepare your soul for temptation. You hear that? That means you're going to go through some things that are trying on your spirit. You're going to go through some things that you're going to battle with. Read. Set thy heart aright. But he says set your heart aright. Read. And constantly endure. And you must constantly endure all the trials and temptations. No matter what. Read. And make not haste in the time of trouble. And the first time that goes wrong, don't fret. Don't, don't run away. Read. Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. You see that? So go through whatever the correction is and keep it moving. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.